I am Courtney Brown, director of the Far Sight Institute, a nonprofit educational and research institute dedicated to the study of a phenomenon known as remote viewing. We are the leading venue for public research into remote viewing as it is done using methodologies that were developed by the United States military or procedures that are derivative of those methodologies. In part one of this two-part documentary, we present remote viewing data that focus on the World Trade Center attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001, the so-called 9-11 events. Also in part one, I describe the experimental conditions that were used to obtain these data, all collected under totally blind and squeaky clean scientific conditions. The presentation that you are watching right now is part two of this documentary. And here the focus has two primary elements. First, we examine the attack that occurred on the Pentagon on that same day. Then we shift to a description of the personnel and overall command and control structure of those who organized and carried out the dual attacks in New York and Washington, DC. Remember, we are not trying to prove anything here. This is a fascinating remote viewing experiment, and we are simply describing the data we obtained as well as outlining how we obtained these data. Nonetheless, some may find these data interesting, helpful, educational, and persuasive. Remember, I designed this study, and my assumption and belief going into this research was that the official story that we were all told about the 9-11 attacks was true and that the remote viewing data would show that the so-called conspiracy theories regarding those events were wrong. Once the experiment was completed and I examined all of the data, no one was more challenged than myself by the possibility that the official story may not be correct. After you see all of the data, you will have to make up your own mind, of course. My only advice is that you keep an open mind and that you take this opportunity to learn a bit more about remote viewing as it is done under optimal conditions by the best viewers on the planet. The remote viewers for this project are Daz Smith and Dick Algar. Both of these viewers have studied remote viewing as it is done using military-derived methodologies for many years and both have long and publicly verified track records in projects conducted at the Farsight Institute. Let us shift our attention to the attack on the Pentagon and focus on what these remote viewing data say about what actually happened that day. First, let us look at a session done by Daz Smith as he focuses on the launch, the flight, and the impact of the object that hit the Pentagon. Again, we are primarily looking to see if this object was an airliner carrying lots of people or something else, such as a missile. Okay, so we've got a movement. Fast, abrupt, pushed, it's very speedy. Propelled is moving forwards, thrusting. I can, I can hear this kind of like thrusting roar as something pushes and moves forward. Yeah, I can feel something propelled uh, with great energy. Propelled, moving forward with great energy. feels like an object which is moving and there's air around it a fast moving object through the air uh, feet again it feels pushed and propelled it feels like it's being thrust forward and controlled it's in a controlled manner 
And this feels intentional. And the object feels man-made. So this feels like a man-made object in motion being pushed forward at high speed. It feels like it's moving through air. I can feel, I can just feel air, air around it, but air being displaced, being moved to one side as this, as this moves forward. Uh, this, and uh, this object feels, uh, feels man-made and it, yeah, it feels curved. It has a curved front to it. Uh, shiny, maybe even white, curved, white, shiny, man-made, moving at speed, displacing, displacing energy and movement as, as it moves, as it moves forward with great power, great for us. This is something that's really going at speed, uh, trading energy behind it. And it feels like it feels like it was it feels like it was directed or aimed. It feels like some kind of I have to say it, it feels like some kind of missile device. It feels like it's being manipulated along a pathway um, by people. Okay, so let's see what else we get. So what we'll try to do now is we'll try to move backwards a little bit, see uh, see if we can determine the origin of this of this uh, fast moving motion object structure thing. Okay, this is interesting. So there's lots of motion and energy, and it feels linear, and I don't feel the distance travelled. It's long. It seems like a, a short distance, a short and direct. So this feels, yeah, this feels like it hasn't traveled far. It feels like it's a short thrusting direction, for just a short thrusting uh, movement that's uh, come from this direction. Yeah, very, very abrupt and kind of like there is. It's there. So what is this then? X. Uh, there's definitely life there. Um, and they're men or male. Angry. Calculated. Uh, they work in a team, um, which has a structure, and it feels militaristic. Uh, it feels it all feels aimed. Um, Goal, goal involved. So it seems, it feels like a small team of men, and I want to say small, I want to say between, it's not two, between four and eight males are involved in this. Uh, they seem to be able to control the movement, action, and thrust of this man made object, which is feels like it's moving through air or through the sky uh, for, for a short distance, a thrusting short distance. They feel separated for it and they feel, I feel like they have 
some kind of grey structured object or a device. Um, I can't see it very well, but I just keep seeing a square, a square device type thing that maybe they're using in some way to uh, control control this object, move this object. It feels like a fast moving object um, in, intended intended to move on a short fast pathway. So let's see where this goes. So what we're trying to do now is we've, we've gone uh, to try to track before what's happening with this, this fast movement. So what we'll try to do now is we'll try to see the combination of where it goes, where it ends. So we'll use the same corner. Okay, well this feels like it's definitely abrupt. There's, there's an end. Um, this feels loud. It's a bang, it's, a, it's an impact. It feels like, feels like a fast moving object that impacts. And as it impacts, I can see and feel bits um, shearing off, moving off, blowing off. Um, Dissipating as they as they as they progress outwards, and these are small and they're fast-moving particles and bits and pieces, uh, rubbish mess. It feels dense here. It feels smoky as well. I can see black, you know, rolling kind of like clouds of smoky type substance. Um, there's definitely an impact here. This is definitely a uh, man-made object, this. It's kind of like driven to an end. In the end is a an impact with energy and motion and feels explosive. I can actually feel force. Loud, it's very loud as well, very bright. Uh, with lots of, lots of clouds, clouds and debris. Very destructive. This feels like a. This feels like an intentional destructive event. Yes, it feels like a few men are controlling a man-made object that moves and is moving through air, maybe the sky, um, and it ends up. It ends up impacting and causing a destructive event. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what else we can pick up here. So let's see if we can Try to sketch this end event, this destructive event, a bit more. Okay, so that's that's big and that's loud. That's big, explosive, and this reaches outwards. I can feel it rolling outwards. Feels like clouds of debris and bits being expelled outwards at force and speed. And this is an intentional to stop something.
So it feels like a man-made object going at great speed, thrusting along, hitting something fast, uh, then it, an explosive force between what it hits, and I can see clouds of like mist and particles and debris move outwards at different angles. Um, small bits of debris uh, being propelled at you know great speed outwards from from the epicenter of, of, of where this is. And it definitely feels like uh, an, in, an an intention behind this. It definitely feels like there was a there was a goal to it feels like to stop something. Um, feels like there were men involved in this and I don't know a close knit team Four, four to six of them, uh, rugged. They feel like they're, tra they feel trained. They feel, they feel like they're military trained. Uh, you know, if I was on an AOL stage, I would have to write an AOL of soldiers. And this does feel, in some ways, like a, a bullet type missile. This, it's been fired and, and, and. And moved towards something um, being propelled. Yeah. You can I see? Uh, let's try to get a bit more information on the object, maybe. See if that tells us anything. I haven't tried that yet, so. Why not have a go at that? So what I'll do now is I'll try to move inside the object and see what we can pick up there for the object. Okay, it definitely feels... It definitely feels a curved element to this. It feels sleek. It feels man-made. Uh, I can I can feel a dome shape to this, um, very slick, shiny-ish, uh, built for a purpose. Designed. Sorry, it's flowing. This shape. It, it feels like I can see. Air being, I can, I, can, I can feel air and space being displaced, flowing, flowing around this uh, as this goes at, at, its, at its speed. It feels white, um, curved, man-made, probably metallic. It feels cold and hard, uh, sleek. Definitely man-made, and it feels hollow as well. But hollow. Let me get this right. It feels hollow, but with with parts inside of it. So it. Um, if I tried to draw a cross section of this, uh, I'm not doing this very well. It's curved. If this is a cross section. It's curved, but it also feels. Densely packed with stuff inside of it. So if you cut it in half, uh, and seen inside, you'd see a dense material. Well, this part anyway, but there are there are other parts actually. It's got it's got like compartments. Um, yeah, it's even got moving parts. I don't have to AOL here an engine. Um, so a moving man-made structure, moving at a speed, directed, curved, slick, designed for movement at a speed, designed to displace the the air around it as it moves. 
man-made, packed, it feels packed, densely packed with materials and this feels chemical but solid. So that's what I get from the inside of this thing. So let's see what else we can pick up here. I don't know if it's going to be relevant, but. Let's see what I can pick up. Maybe on the on the before guys, the uh, the small group of men. Let's see what I can pick up on them. Okay, so there's uh, males. More than one. It feels like four to eight. Close knit group. Trained. They may be even trained for this. It feels like an event. It feels like I'm watching something unfold that these men are involved in. It feels like an event uh, in an urban area. I can feel there's a city and there's buildings and there's structures around. And there are these men and they're off to one side and they kind of like, I feel like they launch or propel this man-made kind of like object at great speed which then impacts blows as I say blows up impacts destroys and then there's a great mess and I can feel emotion there's you know, uh, because it's an urban air I can feel um, people and their emotive and they're scared. Um, and there's clouds, uh, there's clouds, rolling clouds of debris. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Let's, let's get back to the, these guys. So these guys, they all seem to be um, 30 plus. They have a military feel to them. Dark skin. Dark hair in most cases. Some have facial hair. And their clothes are similar. I want to say uniform, but I don't want to say uniform at the same time. It feels it feels like a loose kind of uniform. They all seem to be wearing very similar things, but it doesn't seem to be a, like a regimented, you know, solid uniform. Uh, they work together. They seem to be off to one side, away from the actual, I'm going to have to say target. It feels like there's a target, a purpose, and that they propel and control the movement of this man-made destructive object towards this, I have to say target really, it feels yeah, it feels like some kind of planned operation to um, intercept or impact something with some kind of man-made man -made object. So bear with me, we'll have a drink a second. Right, so let's see if we can just pick up any, any other extra information here. Um, anything that's gonna help. Okay, so fast, direct. I can't express how direct this movement is. It feels like 
at speed. There's motion and energy involved in this. I can feel the thrust, the kick of propelling this, this object forward from here. Not far away, um, men involved, and it feels it feels like they have some kind of device. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like I want to say that this was some kind of controlled missile type object. Fast moving. When it hits, when it oh, it does, it hits. And then there's this explosive pushing out of energy and waves and clouds and debris and bits. And then this causes emotion and shock and panic. Huge big, big kind of like mess of noise, emotion, debris. I can feel like it's almost like being in like in a, in a cloud of, of of smoke and debris and tiny little bits of dust and, and I don't know stone or something. You know, tiny little bits of debris kind of like hitting you from every angle, covering you, pancaking you. This, this object. I don't know, cur is it curved? Is it more curved? It's definitely hollow. It's definitely man made, you know, it's, it's not natural forming, it's constructed. This is definitely a hollow man made constructed object that's moving, it's moving through space. I can feel it. The air around it is dissipating, moving off to the sides. It's it's designed with its sleekness to move through space and and yeah, to move fast. It feels like some kind of controlled vehicle stroke. Missile, but well, that doesn't make sense because it feels if it feels like it's yeah, it's forced or it, it it does hit something. Uh, the interaction between the males that are remote from it but close and this device they have, which seems to control it, but maybe it also causes it to hit and uh, explode or something. I don't know. But that, that's, that's, that's generally what I, I get from this. Okay, so in summary then, this feels like it's a fast moving object that feels man made, it feels uh, designed for the purpose, for the moving. It feels like it's moving fast, thrusting forward, I can feel the energy propelling it. It feels like this is controlled, uh, moved, directed uh, by a group of men, planned, almost like fired towards something. Uh, and then, yeah, with a controlled movement of it, so it's like whew, thrusting it forward, knowing where it's going to go, you know, aiming where it's going to go. It's a plan. It's a planned event. It feels like an event that's unfolding. That has these people involved and this object involved going at great speed, which then hits and impacts, and I can see the yeah, destruction. I'd like to say, yeah, it feels like destruction, but maybe it's destruction of this is just this one object. It's moving, it just like goes along and all of a sudden it's... As you can see, Daz's data seem to suggest that the object 
hitting the Pentagon was a missile fired by military people. Interestingly, he notes that the people have darker skin and some facial hair. We need to compare these data with those obtained by Dick Algeyer for the same Pentagon event. My next, my next gestalt is going to be energy. I don't know. I don't know whether to call this energy or object. I, uh, I'm going to label this. Energy one because it's in motion and it's exhibiting some kind of energy. So let me let me look at this bad boy. There's land here. There's buildings. There's trees. Um, here's the land. Building trees. This is the land that I drew. Um, green of trees. Some buildings. And then there is... Uh, I didn't draw that right. It's not curved. It's, there's... It's, and uh, it's going this way, and it's long and narrow. I don't want to say um, UFO, no, more like a missile airplane. It has a, it's it's glistening and it streaks and it's just a streak across the sky. Like man, I can't even. Uh, follow it, and I, I'm, uh, it'd be, I think I, to match my awareness to this, and right now I'm just going to call this, this, um, thin, uh, tube-like, streaking, what does it sound like? It's got a whine, and there's a goes by with a whoosh, whoosh, um, buzz, almost a buzzing but high pitched, like a World War II buzz bomb cruise missile. Um, it's not. Black, it's got some colors on it. It's silvery, uh, blue, um, rivets, uh, vectors, um, guidance. Um, so it's not a buzz bomb because they weren't guided. This has uh, intelligent, but it's just going straight like a bat out of hell a rocket so I see this thing streak over and um, okay that's that and I don't know it's got to be involved I'm, I'm all over the place on this but I'm just taking these what I'm doing is taking these gestalts one by one and looking at them, and I, I'm not sure how, they, how they're how they connected because I'm isolating each one. I looked at the structure. I looked at the land. I looked at the structure. I looked at the water. I looked at the energy or object, the streaking thing, and my next gestalt would be life vegetation. Um, I don't feel that's important it's just there I don't think there's anything that significant about the vegetation uh, an analyst could bring me back to that but I think uh, humans life um, humans so um, Look at them. I 
I got this in the paper session and I just saw it again right now. I, I can see it right now is um, now I'm seeing the st st streaking object or a st streaking object in relation to the people. So the people are, I don't know if they're lined up, but they're bunched up. Okay, so there's people standing here and I'm gonna draw them real fast. But you get the idea. There's people here and then they're like a, there's a swath cut between them. Okay, so there's other people here I see a distinct and uh, the energy gestalt or the motion gestalt, I don't know if it goes through them or over them. What? Wow. You just, it's like, Okay, what was that? We didn't see that, but it was like it was like something went by. They're looking. Fast, shocking, fast, and they. Uh, who are these people? They're shouting, loud voices. The voices are loud. Um, what do they look like? They're men and women. They're wearing office clothes. Um, you know, the start shirt and necktie, trousers, dockers, kind of what today's people in the workplace would be wearing. Uh, and maybe some of them have uniforms. So different, uh, there's different types of people. Some are in uniform and some are in their office type of plain clothes. And they're, um, startled. Okay, this is an event that they're, did you see that? Did you, what happened? Where was it? What was that? Where did, it, where did that come from? Um, how did this happen? Uh, did you see it? I saw it. I didn't see it, but um, I felt it. Uh, so they're talking about that. Like, God, did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Then someone else is saying, I, I, what the fuck was that? Um, if they, like, is this a test? Were they testing this? Was it a demonstration? They're not sure. They think, um, Something went wrong, but it was, was this um, a test that was scheduled, a drill, a t not a drill, a, like a, t a test, um, but it went wrong. And they, I just get... Um, Conf shocked confusion, confusion, and different stories about what they saw and what they see, and they're comparing notes about this. Um, but nobody here has the whole story. So they either witness something or almost witness something or, and it,
this was a demonstration that they were meant to see. Somebody wanted people to see this. So it was uh, it was put on as a as a a demonstration for effect. The th the streaking thing, like, hey, see what we can do. Um, Kind of refresh my probing icon here. What am I going to look at now? Um, I'm just going to edging. I'm just going to see what I. It's going to take take me a couple minutes to do a breathing exercise here. This is something else totally different. I'm in a totally different place. Um, this is not the river. The water just Offshore. You know, those movies from the 60s and 70s when they test the Polaris rocket, and you see, stubby. You see the thing, like they they launch it out of water with compressed air. So I'm seeing this stubby, this stubby thing, kind of burst up. And you know, like it's not going to take flight, and then the the so it comes up, and there's a flash, and then it like uh, the engine ignites, and it it's like it's not going to achieve flight. It comes up and just hangs there, and like whoa, whoa, and then it I see it ignite. And the thrust is amazing, and then it 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 it, it streaks off. So um, what I saw was this, like a launch sequence, um, cruise missiles, cruise. When you see them launch. A tomahawk. It it doesn't look like it's like it's whoa, whoa, whoa and then it then it takes off and that's what this did, but it's stubbier than a. I would I would see a cruise missile as longer and thinner. This is a stubbier. And this is, this is, this is coming out of water. I've got to say, um, submarine launched. It's not 
from this is this is water. Um, this isn't the river I saw. This is a water gestalt that I didn't get in my S3. And this is a structure here that's annealing coating, rubber eye in it. It's got a, submarines have a coating like this. And it's annealed. I'm going to say that's a submarine. It's... Popeye. 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 I am. I don't know why I'm saying Popeye. Popeye. Pop up. Pop. Pop up. Poseidon. Polaris. Popeye. Well, there's some talking here, and there's some people I got to see. So anyway, I, that looked like a launch sequence of a stubby um, missile. <clears throat> and what else can I see here? I got some more people to look at. Okay, that was wow. The console. There's a okay, one, two. There's chairs. There's people there. There's a panel. I saw the monitors, screens. Oh, that computers. These are guys. I wonder if they're in the submarine. Um, there's at least three of them. One, two, three. They got a display board here. A lot of electronics. So these are high back chairs. Am I drawing this right? There's okay. These guys. I can draw this later. I saw this so quick. They got. They got screens. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. They're in a row. Uh, they're in chairs. They're looking at um, screens, consoles, readouts of uh, numbers, information, uh, like... Um, Air traffic control. I don't know if I don't think it's air traffic control, but that kind of stuff. Um, guidance shit. Um, it's this is stale air. This is uh, recycled air. Recycled air. So there's fans and blowers. But I smell um, a lot of electronic smells, um, a whole bunch of different smells, like a submarine. It, not diesel, it's cleaner than that, but uh, lubricants, old food, uh, electronics. Um, the inside of an airplane. Maybe this is, is this an airplane? The inside of an airplane smell. You know when you walk in an airplane? And they don't let you smoke on them anymore, but they've, it, they've got this smell of the fiberglass.
these guys uh, here's what it rem here's what it reminds me of uh, when they were looking for that missing airplane and they sent the s military search planes up and the guys are on the inside and there's no windows in the plane there's consoles and they they're at um, workstations that are in a row down the fuselage of the plane and I want to say like uh, the word AWACS comes to mind like it's is an AWACS plane and these guys are uh, this might make me airsick but yeah they're in a they're in a in a narrow place with workstations I mean I, I can I can see this I mean I can see them at their workstations and screens and they've got chairs and uh, you know why would you have seat belts on a chair in an office I don't think you would so there's they're buckled in um, this definitely has a military feel to it um, these guys are in uniforms which seem like flight suits to me I think it is pretty clear that these remote viewing data indicate that a missile hit the Pentagon in fact we do not have any remote viewing data from either viewer that suggests that the object that hit the Pentagon had people inside of it at this point we want to dive into the question of who did what we have a good deal of data describing groups who organized and carried out the various activities that occurred on that infamous day. These data can be disturbing, so be warned in advance. If these data are true, then it is even more disturbing. I have learned to trust remote viewing data collected by viewers such as Daz Smith and Dick Algeyer, especially when the project involves a past event where there are corroborating physical data. But again, Watch, listen, and make up your own mind. Let's start with a session by Daz Smith, where he focuses on those who were responsible for the collapse of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Okay, so, so there's a structure. It feels like it changes. Change of shape. Uh, very strangely, um, it feels angular, but uh, I s yeah, it feels like it changes and changes shape over over time of the event, uh, over time of the target. So over time, the structure. Oh. Feels like it gets messy, it transforms, changes shape, um, moves. It feels like a structure that changes form, shape over time. And when I say over time, I mean the time of the target that I'm meant to be looking at. Um, it's almost like it. It feels like it gets uh, built upon. It's built upon the right word. I don't know because I could see. It. I see an up and down movement as well. So it feels like it starts off as one shape. Something comes down, and then something another shape over the top of it. Very, very strange transformation. It transforms shape. Yeah. Um, and there's also life at the target. And there's several different forms of life. I, I feel uh, if I, I feel there are like three different groups of life. Uh, there's a group here, and these seem to be controlling. 
Um, there's a group over here. And they seem to be full of panic and fear. They seem to be moving and running. Um, and there's a group here. These are male. Uh, and this may even be subdivided again into a couple of groups here. Um, and these feel like a couple of groups of males that work well as a team, uh, four to eight in a team. They feel very uh, drilled. Uh, they anticipate each other's movements, feel very organized, feel like they're following orders, feel very kind of like team military kind of based in the way they move, their confidence, their demeanor, their look. Uh, and it feels like they're following uh, orders from this controlling group. Uh, and this all feels very secretive. Um, hidden, secret, covertly done. And this all, this does all feel like it has something to do with this structure, this changing shape. Because I still feel that there's also a, a third element to this, which is this motion movement here. Um, which to me feels like it's, it's slightly dangerous, but it's like a long sweeping motion movement of, and there feels like some kind of object involved in this. And this feels propelled, thrusted. It feels like a controlled movement of something and it feels very kind of like fast and direct like so but it ends abruptly as well and it, I feel it may have something to do with the structure it feels like there is an abrupt it feels like an impact because it's moving and all of a sudden it's not and then there's a flash and there's noise and then there's this huge commotion. I can feel waves of energy and I see clouds of mist, like dust and mist. And, but it feels like debris, very tiny, small particles of debris of lots of different types. And it, it's all moving out from a central place, all fanning out, rolling out tiny, small bits of debris here. Um, yeah, very, very tiny, small particles. Um, and particles feel important to this target. They're key to this target. Um, yeah, deb debris particles of some kind. So yeah, that's the main elements I feel. Very, very complex target. There's a lot happening. But this, what's interesting is, one of these groups feel like they're to do with this propelled object. A second group feels like it's more inside of the target. Now let me see what I can get on that. Okay, so I'm going to see what this second group is doing. Okay, so it's life. They're male. It's a small group. I'd say it's like a unit working together, a sense of brotherhood and connectedness with these guys. 
Um, they're, they're under orders. And I feel they I feel they're inside. They're inside a structure. So they're inside a structure. And I see something else. Blocks. They feel like blocks. Dense. Packed. Locks. Grey, blue. Why are they involved with that? What are they doing? Yeah, I don't really understand this part. They're inside anywhere. And they feel like they are placing and manipulating blocks. And this feels covert, covertly done. This almost feels like it's in. This feels like some kind of strange, kind of like spy stroke infiltration. Because um, this feels very secret. Um, Hidden, yeah, hidden knowledge here. Um, and talking about knowledge, this whole structure, this, this, this whole structure feels important. Uh, and it feels like these guys are, feels that like they're, well, even though it feels like they're doing something bad, it feels like they're also in their own minds trying to protect. And what they're trying to protect feels like knowledge, information or data. I can't feel anything physical here. I mean, they're physical. It feels like a physical structure with normal day-to-day -day things in it. Um, but it feels like the, the actual thing they're trying to protect is they're trying to keep something, they're trying to keep something secret and hidden. Um, and yeah, this small group that I'm looking looking at, their main drive and focus in this is trying to do it from the inside out. They're, 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 it almost feels like they're planting something in there. This, look at these blocks. And the blocks <laughs> feel like um, Play-Doh. in texture and density. Almost, I mean, you know, I'd have to air what I want at this point, a terrorist attack. Because, you, uh, yeah, it feels like they're, well, it does feel like they're uh, attacking a, a structure, but from the inside out. Um, trying to hide uh, information that's inside of it. Okay, so we'll try one more quick attempt to summarize this 10B. Okay, so there's there's an intense energy. And yeah, this flows fast. And this ends abruptly. And then there's confusion and mess and clouds and debris and particles and 
it does feel like an impact or a hit. Uh, it feels like an, it does feel like an urban location because I feel structures. And there's a main structure. Is there a main structure? For the target focus. And this feels da yeah, damaged, I'm gonna have to say damaged. And attacked. Uh, and this also feels, the, the structure feels like it changes shape. I can't pin down a shape. Um, and it changes shape over over the duration of the target that I'm meant to be looking at. And I can't exactly get it, but it feels angular and square, but then at other times it feels messy, but also get a, an up down movement. Uh, as well as this, there is life involved. Um, life at the target feel like it's a combination of men and women uh, I feel they're running they're panicked they're very emotional they're very confused uh, I also feel that there's an element of death involved with this target um, to do with this this these life target related life location related I should say very panicked, very emotional, feel, feel very dirty, very confused, moving away from the target. Trying to anyway. Um, there are other life involved, there's some kind of controlling life and I put them up here because this feels like a hierarchy structure. Um, and this like feels like a few and they feel male. Um, and they give orders down to what I feel like are a couple of groups. Now one of these groups has something to do with the fast moving part of the target. Small group of males, a secondary group of males, maybe even a third group, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, are involved with an internal part of the target. This feels like they're inside, working from the inside out. Feels like they're inside a structure, infiltrating, trying to stop secret information coming out. Coming out, it's trying to stop, trying to save or store or hide knowledge in stuff that's inside a structure. After completing this session, Daz, who is a graphical designer by profession, constructed the following graphic to illustrate his perceptions. Again, this polished graphic was completed while he was still totally blind to the target. As you can see, Daz describes three teams of people, plus a command structure. At the top of the hierarchy are the commanders, and Daz calls them the top tier. They are a powerful and secret group. Below them, there is Team 1, and that is a group of four to eight males who have weapons, but who seem to work mostly as spotters or field observers. Team 2 is a group of four to eight males who control a fast-moving flying object or structure, which would be the airliner that crashed into the South Tower, of course. Team 3 is another group of four to eight males who infiltrate a structure in order to place chemical blocks or bricks around central vertical supports inside a large structure on the surface, which would be the South Tower. Now this activity leads to an explosive event that results in the collapse of the surface structure. Now let's take a look at what Daz says about the so-called top tier group. In a session where he was focusing on the cause of the collapse of the North Tower. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so it's life and a subject. Now the life are males, maybe a, maybe a female involved. Don't know. Um, wow. Uh, okay, so this this feels very secret. Top level. Um, powerful. This is covert. This feels like a. If it were a corporation or or something like that, this feels like you know this feels like management. Uh, these are decision makers. And they planned this. And they're giving out orders. Uh, they feel remote. They don't feel like they're they're not they're not yeah, they're not at the target. They are remote. Um and all of this, the entire target really, um, I don't know if this is right, but this, this entire target does feel, it does feel like it's in the US, uh, US based. It doesn't fit, it, it, it smells and feels like when I went to New York. Um, of course that would just lead me to an AOL of 911 event. Um, just trying to put it on the one side. So let's go back to these guys. Okay, so it's a group. Um, there's no more than twelve, and I feel that this fluctuates. The number, um, no less than six. Um, they meet in secret. They're powerful. They're looked up to. Um, it does feel corporate. Why does it feel corporate? It feels it feels business like. It all feels quite matter of fact to these guys. Uh, there's no emotions that I see. It's just a go it's just a goal giving giving out orders. They give out orders to these other groups of people. These other groups of of people are just act just go out and act. These guys are in charge. And they feel powerful. They, they feel it's a bit like a uh, like the films. They feel untouchable. Uh, and this is down to um, security and communication. Uh, they're well versed in what they're doing. It feels like they've done this before. They know what they're doing. Um, and this does all feel like. Uh, Espionage, stroke intel. It does have that covert, that covert feel about it. These people, these these people, are versed in this. They know what they're doing. They're hiding, hiding this. And it feels like. It feels like. Feels like it's political stroke business. Um, change. Feels like they're trying to kickstart, kickstart something. Is that the right word? Uh, it feels like they might be trying to start something, kickstart something. Um, covertly. Secretly, yeah. So it feels like a group of no more than twelve, no less than six, uh, mainly males. Um, I do feel that there may be some female influence in there, though. They meet in secret, very businesslike. They're very powerful people, um, high up in what they do. They're versed in security, communication, espionage, intel. They know how to hide things. They know how to give out their orders and do it. So they can't be tracked or traced. 
it's all very secretive and yes they're trying to instigate a change um, trying to start something um, this feels both political and business is but bigger than that as well um, it's very cloudy that one I can't put it into words um, yeah it's just it's just big um, uh, this does feel like this, this or, the, or these guys feel like they're in the US anyway and uh, I've only been to New York and it does have that feel of New York it has that smell that, that heat that's what that's what makes me think of this might be somewhere in the US um, yeah that's pretty much it on that part for a topic as sensitive as this one we really need to see what another viewer perceives about the same idea this next session is one in which Dick Algeyer is focusing on the advanced preparations that might have been related to the collapse of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. I'm going to start with structure one. I, I mostly see people in this target and I see various groups of people. I'm not sure how they're interacting, um, but I, I get a wide shot when I see structure one, I'm, I'm inside of it. So here's structure one, and I'm drawn to the interior, and it's a big place. It's a big room. Reminds me of a newsroom, but it's not a newsroom. Reminds me of a place where a lot of people work in cubicles. I see people working in cubicles. So I see like a wall here and um, I had smells of, of uh, carpet. This would be dark carpet. It smells like um, a stale office smell. Smells like people used to smoke here but you can't sm smoke here anymore but they used to. This is a wall and there's no windows. It's all enclosed. And there's like a, a cubicle farm. People at desks, a lot of desks with partitions, a long cubicle here. So there will be people working here. And I see in this open area, people walk. People are walking, running errands, shuffling paper, bringing things. There's two sets of cubicles here. And then there's a, a middle partition here that is like um, facing could be filing cabinets, storage type things, a partition, it's low, and then another, another set of cubicles here with more people working. And the sounds are muffled because it's carpeting. Um, low voices, a lot of people. I hear a sound like a like a teletype, like a clattering, like a da 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 da. Over here, there might be a, not a typewriter, but um, a printer, but an old kind of printer that would have a roll of paper coming through it it shakes and rattles and clamors and people come over and check it and they'd, they'd rip it off. Maybe they take it over here so there's some interaction with that. Um, this has to do with planning and operations. Planning and operations and it has a, a corporate military feel like a little bit 
military, it involves military, but these guys, it's an overlap of corporate and military. I'm not sure right now. It's a military and civilian place. If they're, they'd be contractors or maybe um, government agencies. There's a military component, but a lot of these are are not in uniform. They're civilian. Maybe they used to work for the military. This fan for the noise. So that's the inside of structure one. It's an enclosed place. It's pretty quiet. There's a lot of intense work going on. As I said, as I said, I'm seeing That's wrong. As I said, I, I, I'm seeing mostly people at this target. And I'm drawn to, I saw a particular person as I, as that looks central to this to me and when I saw him he was like standing at a desk so like a guy that has um, now this is a nice desk I'm not drawing very well this is, this is like an expensive desk but it's it's like this high and he's he's standing there rigidly He's got a telephone here. He's talking on the telephone, and he's you know keeps pens and a lot of paperwork. And he's in a. I I think he's in a shirt with cufflinks, like a nice shirt. And uh tailored trousers like a nice suit but he took the jacket off and hung the jacket over here and so he's he's a guy that um, works at his desk standing up with rigid posture very intense and I I'll show you how I see him Let me draw him again at his desk, bigger. All right, so you got like a necktie on, probably like talking on the phone. Nice shirt, cufflinks. His desk is like this. And he stands up all day. It's like he, I don't know if it, he thinks it keeps him uh, more alert, burns more calories. He's a very fit guy. He just doesn't think he should sit down. Um, really intense guy. And I see him as, as, uh, Very intense eyes. 
and he's got those glasses that um, I don't know if they're wire frame or no frames. I can barely see these glasses. They're like, they're almost, um, almost can't see them, you know? They're like, and he's got a pretty straight nose. Yes, and his mouth really thin. He's got some age lines here. His face is thinner than this. His hair is a little widow's peak. It's graying, but um, still got some nice hair even though he's in his 60s probably. Maybe even older than that. Um, kind of goes up like this, but it doesn't He had shorter hair when he was young. He had a military haircut when he was young. He was, uh, he had the like, God, his mouth is really thin. It's like, like that. And he's got some little bit of jowls, but not too much. Well preserved for his age. He, uh, Really, his eyes could cut steel. He looks at you with those eyes, very penetrating gaze. I see him as hair is more stylish as he's older. I think he had a sh like a crew cut when he was younger. Um, he wears a really nice suit. You know, not ties like... Um, well tied, button down, very starched shirt, dark suit. This is a corporate kind of guy. He, I get a smell from him like expensive soap. Very faint smell of um, good, good aftershave, but not that you could You'd have to get up close to some, it's just a very faint whiff of something clean and pleasant. It's, a, it's not an overpowering cologne type smell, but just he's like, he uses good soap and he's in charge, man. He, he's one of the top guys. He, he's like uh, advises presidents. He tells presidents what to do. I mean, he, if there's somebody that orders the president around, it doesn't order, but the president takes his advice and listens to him. He, yeah, he's, he's like corporate elite, um, uh, elitist new world order, um, PNAC. He's a chairman of the board kind of guy, been in a lot of corporations, been in the military, is involved in the government, is at the very highest levels internationally, um, very powerful guy, and but just ruthless. I mean, he looks, he doesn't look at, like he doesn't look evil. He looks kind of nice, although there's a, there's a certain smirkiness to his face, and I get a sense that this guy, this guy would order civilians to be killed in the morning and have no compunction, no bad feelings about it, no conscience about innocent people being killed if they were collateral damage and it was furthering a greater aim. And he would, he would have the order and like, did you get it done? And then he wouldn't care. He'd go play with his granddaughter right after that and not even think about it. I hear his voice. He has a, he, he talks with a high pitched, his voice is clipped and high pitched and he talks kind of almost nasally with a, with an accent that's Midwest, Ohio, um, Missouri, 
Illinois, Chicago, kind of a Chicago accident, talks very precisely like he's from Illinois and you better listen to him and he's, he's just telling you like it is and I, I could, that's what his voice sounds like to me. It's like he talks like this and you better listen, damn it. And don't, you wouldn't argue with him, he's just going to shut you down. So that's human one, and I, yeah, he enunciates when he talks, that's, that's, he enunciates, he en he's, yeah, well, I think I got the voice. So. Okay, so that was human one. Now there's some other people who are kind of similar to him, but I feel that they're below him, so I'm going to look at human two. Um, and... My entry into this was high quality wood, very fine, polished, okay? This is like dark brown, not koa. Oh, what kind of, what kind of wood would they make the, a conference table at, um, that really rich corporate people would say, this is very polished, fine wood, <clears throat> all right? And there's people sitting and standing around this place, and they're the kind of people that interact with that hum really nice, okay, dark leather chairs. I can smell the leather. This is like, uh, you know, corporate boardroom kind of deal. I don't know. Uh, I don't get a sense of like cabinet meeting, not White House, but these are high power players and there's some people here and they're all in uh, they're well dressed. They're in, these are suits. Let me draw them all in here really quickly. Okay, so And they've got like uh, coffee in fine china. You know, they'll have a water pitcher here, water bottles. There'll be water, and then they've got notes. And the 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 documents are in folders. They're in folders with tabbed, and they're sealed. These would be um, secured in really nice, maybe like leather binders. This is all like first-rate, high-class stuff here. It's real important. This is a secure room. I get a sense of uh, white noise, you know, shielding so it can't be eavesdropped on and, and it's like not just anybody can walk in here. This is a, a secure secret place. Um, These guys are calculating something cold. They're making decisions that are uh, decision. They're making decisions that'll affect a lot of people, but they don't want people to know about the decision-making process. Um, and they're somehow like the guy I drew before, maybe in this meeting, like he might be. Here, here, but he's senior to them. But these people are senior to a lot of people. This is high level shit. Really nice. Boardroom, you'd think in a boardroom like this they'd have a big view, but it's closed. It's closed off um, for security.
this stuff when they're done with it, they can't take it home. Oh, one guy can. The guy that was at his stand-up desk could. But these guys, they're briefed on it. They get to talk about it. They make decisions on it. But all these papers get put in files and locked up and put in a safe when they're done. Um, this is not something they can like put in their briefcase and take home. I don't think they can bring a briefcase in here. Sitting down. This is like a... Like a screening room or a meeting room, they're all, they're not at desks, they're all facing this way, they're facing this screen. And there's some people standing over here. It's a small group, there's only, I don't even think there's 20 of them. Uh, 12 to 16 or 17. A small group, they're high level people, these guys are over here and there's a, this is before PowerPoint. Um, if you were going to do this today, you'd have a big flat screen monitor in the wall, and it'd be a computer file, and they'd click in the it go on. You wouldn't need to project it, but this is this is projected. It's like not a movie, not a slideshow. It might be digital. It's like this technology is. 20 years ago or so. So it was state of the art then, but there's a screen that actually comes down or it's a th white wall. It's not a flat screen monitor. So they're watching this and there's information being given to them. And And now, when I look at it again, I'm seeing um, energy, explosion, dust. So I see brownish, energetic dust cloud, energy, explosive things over here. Um, the effects of a blast. I see it when I'm looking at them, but it's not in the room with them. It might be what they're seeing on the screen. It might be what they're talking about or being presented, but I, I somehow connect these guys to this explosive event in dust cloud uh, debris um, these guys are really high level elite too like uh, movers and shakers of the world um, there's just a few of them you know the What's a conspiracy but two or more people agreeing on a illegal or clandestine thing? This is definitely, I feel this was more uh, planning than, than aftermath. I can't get the time straight on this. I could. What was that? Human three. By the way, all those people look the same. They're all dressed the same. They're all in suits. They're all about the same age. They're all men. There might have been a woman, a woman or two, but mostly male, mostly middle aged male, very powerful people, and they had to have uh, some kind of clearance to get in their badges. It was like invitation only, another place you couldn't just walk into. Uh, there's another room and more people.
Here's another stand-up desk. This, but this is more like a drafting table. Okay, so here's a desk, and you would work here, standing up. And there's pads here, like uh, thick pads of big paper, um, drafting paper, sketching paper, um, blueprint type of stuff. And there's uh, like rulers and f uh, special kind of pens, calligraphy kind of pens or uh, very precise drawing instruments and paper and there's a guy standing there. And over here is a is a cabinet with really thin drawers. It reminds me of at the library room where they keep maps. The, the, it's about this high and it's got a whole lot of thin drawers. They're thin but they're really um, deep. So you pour these, you pull these drawers out and there's thick big sheets of paper in there that are like maps, blueprints, designs. Um, and this is all locked up. This is another secure room. And over here, there's like a workstation with people sitting. And I see computer monitors that are not today's. They're, remember when your computer monitor was about that big, you know, the kind like this was state of the art then. These were big screens, like a big computer monitor, but the, the things were this big, like you had to move your computer monitor, the thing was like shaped like that and really big. And there's some towers here. It's like a workstation, computer. I get a um, forgery comes to mind. Um, making bogus stuff uh, forgery. this place is also to get in the door there's a keypad where you gotta punch a code to get in this is secure. This, this is like, uh, I want to say, CIA document making place where they make um, something that could pass for real under any scrutiny. Um, yeah, they're making all kinds of documents and uh, putting stuff out, but it seems about uh, a few years ago, this is not modern day computer stuff. This was real state of the art, but you know, late 80s, 90s. Back when computer screens were this big. Um, These guys never talk about their work. They're really trusted. They got, they, they're, uh, this is secret stuff. And they take great pride in it and they're very skilled at it. But this is a very closed fraternity right here. This, these guys are not going to go like tell their wife what they made today or family or they won't even tell most people where they work. Um, very secure stuff. And, but they're, really proud of what they do. Uh, they think it's important and they, uh, they're very skilled at this. Like artists. The central guy. Mr. Cold Bastard. 
nice suit. A lot of people around a table. Orders, plans, implement. Watch a presentation about it on a projector. These guys go to another meeting, go on a little theater kind of thing. Um, he's in charge of it. He's advising important people. There's stuff that's done in secure rooms where documents are made, forgeries, maps. Um, it could be like a a title to something, bonds, uh, certificates of um, bearer bonds. You know, it's like maybe they're making fake bearer bonds or something. And then somebody's in a place where they got to evacuate. To give you an idea of how clear these remote viewing data can be, here is a short segment of a remote viewing session where Dick Algeyer describes one part of the 9-11 drama. This segment is actually part of a larger body of work of his which focuses on aspects of the Pentagon attacks. In the middle of that work, Dick Algeyer notices something else going on elsewhere that felt related, and he described it, giving you a good idea of how a viewer can perceive elements that are related, however distant in time and space, and pull them all together, something that would not be easy for a physical eyewitness.
For a moment, let us put aside disbelief and think about the unthinkable. This project has caused me to question everything I once thought I knew about the 9-11 events. I know remote viewing, and I know the quality of these remote viewers. I have learned to trust the data that they obtain, especially since I designed the experimental conditions for many Farsight projects, and I designed this Farsight project. I have also learned over the years that whenever people say, nah, they would never do that, they are giving authorities permission to do exactly that, because those same authorities know they probably will not be caught because you would never believe they would do it. Eventually, authorities can get cocky, cocky enough to think they could get away with just about anything. That is at the core of most tragedies, from sex scandals involving religious or public figures to large-scale financial meltdowns, to setups that lead to war. While remote viewing data by themselves cannot prove that something did or did not occur, many may find the results presented here persuasive when considered along with the long list of anomalies surrounding the 9-11 physical record. The remote viewing data tie together a lot of loose ends. These data do suggest that there was a scripted effort that utilized unwitting Islamic terrorists to create an incident that pushed America into war. So, where does that put us now? Well, from the perspective of what we have gleaned from these remote viewing data, it is clear that we do not have all the answers and questions remain. For example, we do not know what actually happened to American Airlines Flight 77, if it indeed did not crash into the Pentagon. We also do not know how widespread the possible overall 9-11 plot might have extended, or how far up the chain of command it went. We similarly do not know the extent of foreign involvement, if any. But we appear to know a lot more than we did originally before conducting these investigations. If these remote viewing data are accurate, then perhaps the most important thing that we have learned from all of this is that democracy is a vulnerable and living process, not something that one can abandon to automatic and periodic voting procedures. We have learned that no nation, no matter what form of government or how long established, is immune to major manipulation. The remote viewing data presented in this report are part of a fascinating experiment using remote viewing. They are internally consistent, and they appear similarly consistent with a body of physical evidence that suggests that there is more to the 9-11 events than that which is contained in the official story. As with all investigations that utilize remote viewing data, this report does not offer proof, even if it is persuasive to many. The results ultimately need to be confirmed with continued analysis of corresponding physical data. The remote viewing of the 9-11 tragedy is something that was going to happen one day, no matter what. There is no way an investigation such as this one could have been prevented forever. Now it is done, and we have time to think about the results and all that they imply. As I have said often in the past, keep an open mind. It is something we will all need. I am Courtney Brown, Director of the Far Sight Institute.